Uh, uh, my question is actually to Susan. Um, I'm sorry if, if I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Um, almost all my friends, or nine out of ten, they don't really have a positive perception of Muslim. It's always linked to hatred or violence in the Middle East or discrimination against women or other religions. And uh, I know this is not right, uh, but I suppose my question is, because um, my, my, my friends come from all kind of background, race, age, or even religions, but for some reason, they have very similar perception about that. So I, I, I suppose my question is, um, do you think or do you agree this is a common perception in our society? Um, I think it is a common perception, and I think um, there have been studies that suggest that there is a negative perception about Muslims in society. Um, and that's something that we have to work on as a collective. I don't think it's the sole responsibility, responsibility of Muslims in Australia or non-Muslims. Um, the easiest way for that to change is for your friends to actually get to know some Muslims and speak to them as human people um, and move away from, you know, McDonald's journalism and that sort of thing and taking their reports from certain newspapers and certain shows. <laughs> and when that happens and they actually speak to their Muslim neighbour over the fence or the Muslim guy that works in the milk bar and realise actually you're just normal people like us. The re we need to keep in mind Muslims are not the first people to be seen like this. It's actually happened in waves. If we take Australia as the example, for a while it was this cultural community that was, uh, you know, demonised, the Italians, the Greeks, then it was the Vietnamese, oh my gosh, they're all drug, they're all in a drug trial and they're all out to kill us and all those sort of things. It's just the Muslims' turn now. It's a pity that as Australians we haven't learned that, you know, once we get to know each other it's okay and then we move on to the next group that we're worried about. I yeah. hope that it would it, that I hope that it would finish with Muslims it's just I think if we can have some human interaction will a lot of those fears and misconceptions can change Susan can I just point out when my father came here from Europe as a migrant and then he started teaching immigrants like in, uh, the Italians and Greeks um, I think you're wrong the, the suspicion that you say was this is just what we're seeing a, uh, a similar version of what those, Muslims, those uh, immigrants face, I think is completely wrong. That's, that's ahistorical. It's not my experience of it. I'd also point out there are in fact more Buddhists in Australia than there are Muslims. And we don't hear anything about that. We don't invite Buddhists onto this panel, or Tony doesn't invite Buddhists onto this panel to explain. He's invited you, you and your <laughs> husband and, you know, Miss Australia and people like that. But he doesn't do it with Buddhists. There's specifically something in the community itself as well. And I think, honest, to be honest, you mentioned this yourself in an interview yep. with the Malaysian Star newspaper only a couple of years ago, where you said, within the community, being a new convert from Christianity, you, you faced the calls from within the community, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't make friends with, uh, with uh, people who weren't Muslim, and you should withdraw from society and everything that was haram. And you said this was a problem for you. And I think that's an acknowledgement that there is, in fact, a problem within the Muslim community, a rejection of strand, which is what makes this different. And I hate to be blunt, I hate to foster, you know, have all these people that... No, you don't. Okay, no, that's no, true. No, okay. Yes, I do. I do. I, I'd rather so you... Sorry, no, no, quick response, Susan. Um, the quick response would be, absolutely, there are people a very small minority of people within the Muslim community that are reluctant to engage with the wider community. But this is more... There's a majority in this interview. Excuse me, I, I just I said read the majority of Muslims mm. reject friendships with... Well, I'm afraid you that... You did. That, well, I'm afraid that's just not correct. Maybe your well, translation you from the Malay is not... It's, it's an English a language newspaper. Yes, well, yes, just very well, briefly. Okay. Uh, I think we're kidding ourselves if we think uh, Australia is racked by any of the, the real strands of discord that you have in other countries. Of all the countries in the world, uh, the Muslim... Uh, Christian divide here is nothing uh, and that's the reality when you travel in other parts of the world it's nothing the reason why there is a reflection I don't think is about much to do with what happens here sure you get uh, the odd person who does something silly but you see globally there's this fight uh, from the Wahhabists from the the militant stream to take out one of the big Islamic societies there's this fracture within Islam whether it's Saudi Arabia Pakistan Indonesia um, they're all the objectives of the Wahhabists. That's why there's a, a global battle going on to deal with the source of that in Afghanistan, and that's why some of that gets played back in Australia. Okay, but look, some of, our, uh, some, some of our audience had their hands up for a while. Just take this gentleman down the front here. 
Uh, just a comment for Andrew from a non-Caucasian. I'm a Muslim and I'm trying to practice as I sometimes pray and I sometimes fast and I occasionally drink alcohol. So we are talking about a very wide, we are talking about one billion people. We can't generalize like that. And um, again, just a comment that the whole, and the gentleman as well, the whole Taliban was created by American to oppose Russian. I mean, that was the whole start of the story, which built up to this issue. Of course, we should take responsibility. I agree with that. And we should basically clarify that what is the basically the understanding that we have from Quran. But we can't just generalize like that. And please don't Not do that. You have the tool in the newspaper, and that's your responsibility. So said, please help. I've already said, for example, okay. I've already said that Indonesia, for example, is a standing reproof to the idea that there is a common jihadist element. I mean, there are jihadist elements in Indonesia, but it's fun fundamentally democracy. Andrew, I'm going to have to get you to wrap up.